Looking back at our 2x2 grid, which helped us describe true positives, true negatives, false positives and false negatives, we can see that our columns and rows represent the same classes. In the binary scenario, that is just one class being true or false, this comes down to a very simple matrix of just two columns and rows. But what if we have multiple classes that we want to predict? For example, we want to predict different species of animals such as cat, dog, bird and so on. How do we construct the same matrix for this case? Let's start by giving our initial 2 by 2 grid a name. A matrix where all the rows show the model predictions and all the columns show the actual true values of our dataset is called a confusion matrix. The name is rather straightforward as the matrix aims at showing what classes our model is confusing with other classes. So, as an example, let us construct a 3 by 3 matrix for our animal prediction model. We now consider three possible classes, cat, dog and bird. Therefore, we will have three rows for each of our class and three columns in the same order. Let's assume now that we want to classify our test data. First, we will have a look at every data point our model predicted as cats. For our example, we will assume that our model predicted 20 data points belonging to the cat class. Out of those 20 predictions, however, only 15 are actually cats. Four other data points are in reality dogs, and one single data point should be a bird. Similar to this, our model predicted 30 data points to be dogs. Out of those 30, we have 27 correctly predicted dogs, and 3 should be a cat instead. Luckily, our model did not misclassify any birds as dogs. Ok, so for the last class, birds, our model predicted 15 data points to belong to this class. Our model did a really good job and did not misclassify any cats or dogs as birds. Now that we constructed our confusion matrix, you can use the same matrix from the previous video. So, for example, let's look at cats. The number which can be found in the field lying in the cat row and the cat column is our true positive number. The sum of all of the other numbers in the same row are our false positives, meaning that we predicted cat, but they are actually some other class. The sum of all the numbers in our cat column, except for the one in the cat row, displays the false negative number. In the end, those data points should be labeled as cats, but our model failed to predict them accordingly. And all of the other numbers not in the cat column or cat row are our true negatives. With this, you can now compute any of the discussed metrics. A confusion matrix can be scaled to any number of classes, 2, 3, 10 or even 100 classes and more. The diagonal of the confusion matrix will always show the true positives across all classes. Thus, the higher the numbers on the diagonal and the lower in any other position, the better your model will be. The confusion matrix also provides you with some additional information. For example, it could show you whether a specific set of classes is more likely to be confused with each other, which can be seen by higher numbers in the respective column and row intersections. As the confusion matrix is quite simple to construct and presents a lot of useful information, you will likely want to look at it if you ever deal with classification problems.